Rise up on your feet, lift your hands, and give the Lord all the thanks and praise tonight. Make sure you participate in this service. This is not a drama show. This is not a cinema. This is a miracle service. You must participate with God for Him to do what He wants to do. Lift your hands, give Him thanks, and give Him praise. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You are God from beginning to the end. <laughs> There's no place for argument. You are God of I want you to pray one prayer tonight before you sit down. Ask the Lord to give you a tangible miracle tonight. Lift your voice and pray in the next two minutes. Everywhere, pray everybody. Ask the Lord for something tangible. Some of us keep coming for services and we watch other people get their experience, get their deliverance, get their miracle. And you wonder when your day will come. Your day comes when you learn to participate. He says, either though have you not asked, ask and receive so that your joy will be full. Ask the Lord for a visitation tonight. Everybody pray. I want to hear your voice. I know we can do better. Let the sound of your voice generate a shift in the atmosphere. Let the sound of your voice generate energy in this place today. Lord, Reconza de na maha bro bela kapapa bela saha Idora sude de de kapala na maha Hambe Touch me tonight Bela kapro mbele te kapaha Re kapana de si ba te kombe I kapana na mala konza de kapala kina nata Ile enza tina teri ya bahale ko bela sa Mande bro sa beti kapala kombe Ile kapana na kapala In Jesus name One more prayer I want you to pray and say, Lord, let this month be the month of answered prayers for me. In the name of Jesus, lift your voice and pray. You Hold on, sir. I want to hear them pray. Let them pray. You see, every time you pray, the angels of God begin to move. Every time you pray, there is a shift in the realm of the spirit. God cannot do anything outside of your prayer. Let this season be a season of answers. Answer every cry, every prayer, every long awaited answer. Let it be released in this season. Are you praying? Your name is a strong tower. You know that song? Jesus. Ah! To you belong all power. Jesus, whenever I call your name, you will make a way. Your name is a strong tower, Jesus. Your name is the way maker, 
Jesus, to you belong all power, Jesus, wherever we call your name, you will make our way, your name is a strong power, Jesus. Whenever I call your name, you will make a way. Your name is a strong tower. I feel a shift in this room. I feel a shift in the atmosphere. Something is moving on your behalf. Something is changing. Jesus, whenever we call your name, you will make a way. Your name is a strong tower. In Jesus. Amen. Please hold hands with the neighbor, just to two. Father, we agree tonight that this will be an atmosphere of breakthrough. We agree tonight that this will be a place of miracles. Signs and wonders that you will do by your mighty hand and power. Move every movable situation. Answer the cry of every heart. I pray, Lord, for an experience in your presence that your people will live to remember. Amen. Your amen is sick. Yeah. Father, I pray that everyone that is here will stand as a representative of loved ones, of friends and families that are desperately in need of your touch. And I pray that you visit them wherever they are. In Jesus' precious name. Can you clap your hands for 60 seconds? Give God a praise. Give God a big shout of praise. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we ready tonight? Listen to me before you sit down. I want you to understand something. One of the only reasons why you will receive when you come for a service is when you decide in your heart that that service is your service, not another body's, another person's own. You didn't come to watch a drama. You didn't come to watch a man perform. If you came to watch, that's all that you will get. But you have to insist with faith. The woman with the issue of blood. Jesus was not going her way. Jesus was going to another person's house. But she pressed. Your faith can press after God tonight. And insist that today is your day. In the name of the Lord Jesus. So I beg you. Especially those who are online. I beg you. That from this point to the end of the service. Let your heart be open. It's not tomorrow God will visit you. It's now now god is a god of now he said now faith is and he will glorify his name in our lives in jesus name greet somebody by your side and take your beautiful seat in the presence of god Psalms 121, verse 1 to 2. I want to teach or share briefly tonight on what I call the help of God. Um, some of us, I believe that our miracle tonight will be the miracle of understanding. And then, after the word of God will allow the Holy Spirit demonstrate that which his word says. The end of God's word is to produce
according as it has been spoken the word of god is said to bring a manifestation by the power of the holy spirit and that's how you know that it is god's word you heard the end of it is a manifestation it creates an experience for you it brings you into the very experience that it speaks about so that your life becomes a testimony and a testament of the goodness of god amongst men psalms 121 verse 1 to 2 i will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help my help comes from the lord who made heaven and earth i think there's a song like that i will lift up my eyes my help, my help, my help. all of my And oh my soul, this is a singing service, so you have to be ready. When trouble comes, and my heart burden me, have you been there before? That I am still waiting in the silence until you come. Just the voices. You raise me up. You raise me up. So I can stand on my own. You raise me up. To walk on me see. I am strong. I am when I am on your shoulder, you raise me up to my... One more time, just the voices again. You raise me up, you Listen to what we are singing. So I can stand. God is a lift out man. You raise me up. Me see. I am strong. I am strong when I'm on your shoulder. On your shoulder, you raise me up to God, and I can say. somebody's testimony I'm starting to prophesy to you it doesn't matter how down you have gone God is about to raise you God is about to lift you beyond every circumstance I am strong when I am on your shoulder you raise me up to mother has brought me out of the miry clay and set my feet upon the rock that I should stand. Hey, I feel God. I am strong. I am strong. So I am strong. You raise me up. Psalm 60 verse 11 My God, I love the word of God It builds faith inside of you 
all of a sudden your eyes are open to see that what was a limitation is actually a stepping stone read it is on the screen one to go give us help from trouble for the help of man is that true have you been there before that you tried all you could all the connections around you and nothing worked everything failed that time he prayed a prayer stand up on your feet let's pray let's pray this prayer he said give us help from what trouble for the help of man king james said for vain is the help of man he said some trust in chariots and some in horses but we remember the name of our god raise that verse as a prayer and say lord give me help i need your help now now not tomorrow now lift your voice and pray my god there's an anointing in this house there's an anointing in this place. Give us help from trouble. For vain is the help of man. For the help of man is useless. If it is up to man to help you, then you may fail. Give us help from trouble. For vain is the help of man. Come on, somebody pray. Somebody pray. Give me help. In the midst of difficulties, in the midst of circumstances, give me help from trouble. Hey! My God, there's power in this place. There is power in the name of there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain. Give us help from trouble. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. In Jesus' name, we pray. Please be seated. Let's go into the war. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. That's King James translation. Do you have it in message translation? Just for a little understanding. That's Psalms 121 verse 1. When it speaks about the hills, the mountains, it's talking about the systems of men. I look up to the mountains, does my strength come from mountains he's talking about the systems of men he's talking about connections everything that man can offer that you believe can be of help to you in times of trouble and the psalmist is asking a question a question that doesn't need an answer because everybody should know that answer i look up to the mountains does my strength come from mountains verse 2 he said no my strength comes from where comes from where if you don't have anything in your mouth shout that word louder my strength my help comes from god comes from jesus if all i say is jesus 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 that's more than enough If all I say is Jesus, Jesus, believe it or not, that's more than enough. Listen to this one. If who can help is Jesus, Jesus. You know, sometimes when you have a revelation, you change the song to suit what is in you. All you know is Jesus, Jesus. It's more than enough. Jesus, that's more than enough. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. Shout that name again, Jesus. Jesus. 
I want you to shout that name and every wall of Jericho around your life is coming down now. Shout it. That's a name above every other name. It's a multi-purpose word. If that's all you have, it's enough. I'm not saying every other thing is not, is, is, is not good enough. But if all you have is Jesus. Those days they taught us in Sunday school. They say one with God is majority. They say Jesus plus nothing equals to everything. Amen. The help of God. What is divine help? Please be seated briefly. We are talking about divine help tonight. What is divine help? Divine help number one is when God rallies men and systems of support. Whether natural or supernatural. When God rallies men and systems of support to the aid and the advantage of a man. When God rallies men and systems of support, whether natural or supernatural systems, to the aid and the advantage of a man, that's divine help. It has to be God that will gather everything. People will not help you because they want to. Everybody who helped you had somebody else more connected to him or her, or closer to him or her, that he would have helped at that time. It takes God. Number two, divine help is the support of God in a man's life. The support of God. Second Chronicles 26 verse 15. Divine help is the support of God when God decides to support a man. I'm not talking about your uncle. I'm not talking about your relative who is a saint when god decides to be your support when he decides to become the pillar that you will rest on look at the example of this king here second chronicles 26 15 if you have it please put it up for us quickly let me show you the example of a man in scripture that god decided to support and he made devices this is a king called uzziah in Jerusalem, invented by skillful men to be on the towers and the corners to shoot arrows and large stones. Because of the help of God around him, he had supernatural intelligence. He began to produce weapons that were new, technology that was new to his time. That's the extent. So when we talk about divine support or divine help, it goes beyond the physical. God can bless a man's intelligence and take him years ahead of his generation and make him invent things that will bring advantage and support to his time to shoot arrows and large stones so his, his fame spread wide and far for he was what marvelously helped come on talk to me he was what the Bible, if the bible says he was helped that's okay the bible says what he was marvelously helped you know what marvelous means marvelous means a wonder you can't understand it he said this is the lord's doing that's why it is marvelous in other words it will cause you to marvel wonder is the lord's doing so when the bible says a man was marvelously helped even his enemies began to wonder how if god if you have not experienced god to a point where people begin to doubt where your power is coming from a pastor told me one time that a pastor was talking to him and asking him about me this power this guy is using are you sure it's from God they have not seen power yet oh. no they have not seen anything at least we are not wearing ring there's no chain in my waist or in my leg amen when God decides to support a man Uzziah was a king that ascended the throne when he was 16 years he was a teenager he knew nothing his father had been killed so he was already disadvantaged to lead the entire nation of judah in a time where war prevailed it's either you capture or you are captured and here is a teenager coming on the throne what will he do 
Possibly inherited problems from his father's reign. But he was wise enough to look to God. The psalmist says, I look up to the hills. From whence cometh my help? And God put his hand on a teenage king and made him so mighty that the Bible says he was marvelously helped till he became strong. That means help also is like subsidy where God super intends on your behalf until you arise. This is not, you know, you, you and God 50-50. No, this is when you have come to the end of yourself and God decides to help you. Number three, divine help. Divine help is when the Lord honors the word of a man. Divine help can also be when God honors the word of a man. The Bible says God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent of his word. As he said, he shall he not do it. As he spoken, he shall he not command it to be so. So it is only God's word that has been proven over time to come to pass. But God can also decide to honor the word of a man. And then the word of that man becomes like the word of God. A man called Jabez in scripture, 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. The Bible says he was more honorable than his brethren. Every, everybody had high hopes on him. Everybody had great expectation on him. Everybody looked at him as the one that would salvage his family. Everybody looked at him as the one that would bring hope, restoration to his clan and his kinsmen. But the Bible says he was called Jabez because he was born in sorrow. And that became the trajectory of his life. Everything was upside down. And then he prayed a prayer. He said, oh, that thou will bless me. The Bible says he called on the God of Jacob. And oh, that thou will bless me. And enlarge my coast. He said, and keep me from evil that I will not cause shame. And the end of the scripture says that God granted him what he requested. That means when God honors your word by granting you what you request, that is what? Divine help. Somebody say divine help. Now you think of it, if God answers your prayer every day for seven days, every day for one month, think of that a whole year you prayed to God and every time you prayed, God answered you. Think of the kind of results that will be produced in your life. Jesus stood in front of the grave of Lazarus. What did he say? He said, Father, I thank you because I know that you always hear me. There was a man called David in scripture, 2 Samuel 24. When God sent a plague to kill Israel because David had numbered Israel. The Bible says David raised an offering of sacrifice to God in verse 25. And the Bible says God heard the prayer that was made and removed the plague from the land. That's an example of God listening to the cry and the prayer of a man. Honoring the word of a man. Elijah was another example. It was almost as if every time Elijah spoke, God would answer. May God take you to that dimension in Jesus' name. Every time he called, God answered him. He called on fire. First Kings 18, God answered. First Kings 17, the widow who, his, whose house he was staying, her son died. And the Bible says, Elijah prayed to God. He said, oh, let the soul of the Lord come into him. The Bible says, and God heard his prayer. It had not happened before. Before that time, nobody had prayed for God to bring back the dead, and it happened. So I don't know where Elijah knew or saw that from. But tonight, I want people with daring faith to believe God for things that people around you have not seen. You know, sometimes we belittle God. There are, you believe God can do this, but this one, ah! And God, God is charging like a horse. Give me space, let me prove to you. I believe God for 10,000 when God is ready to give you in hundreds. I know your question in your heart. How? How is not your question? There are two questions that you shouldn't ask. And the reason is because the answer to that question is God. Why and how? 
in your life never you ask why and what talk to me never you ask what why you know why why speaks of purpose why is the reason behind it isn't it and God is the reason why you should get a breakthrough God is the reason why he should give you a miracle yesterday and still do another miracle today you know we think we think you see you see you see somebody say okay ah but see, every time miracle miracle talk that's the nature of God he called himself El Shaddai he's all sufficient he has so much he's looking for where to dispense so every time should be miracle because God is always looking for someone to taste of his goodness somebody didn't hear what I'm saying so don't ask why and don't ask how how is still his business you just position yourself like Mary she said be unto be, let it be unto your servant according to your word that's why it's easy to get a miracle it's so easy that people don't get it it's easy you just accept and allow him to do it nothing concerns you with how he's going to do it and when he's going to do it and where he's going to keep that sufficient for the day is the trouble you allow him to just walk that's why sometimes when you go to pray heavy prayer points God will answer it by just giving you a little peace in your heart and you need more than the peace you need an explanation so thank God God is king God doesn't explain more you better accept that peace I hope you're understanding what I'm saying divine help there are various kinds of help even in scripture you can see there are at least about four types of help that a man can experience number one self-help self-help a man can help himself <laughs> self-help Luke chapter 12 the Bible tells us in verse 16 to 20 about a man that the Bible called the rich fool he had a bumper harvest and what did he say he said wow but I've harvested so much he said what will I do with all of this he said okay I will build bigger bands I will tear down my bands and build bigger bands and then I will say to myself soul relax and eat you have walked you have worked hard eat and the bible said god called him a fool you know sometimes because of the ability and the potentials we have we feel that there are things we can do particularly when it has to do, do with things of destiny we feel that there are things we can do god i don't need you in this area academically i'm sound i know if i read i'll pass i don't need you there but i need you in this other area self-help as much as it is real it is destructive if you depend on what you can do too much a time will come where your strength will fail self-help number two there is the help of man the help of man too is another help that we can experience in life first Chronicles 12 verse 1 verse 21 and verse 22 this is a scripture about David at this time David's army began to build up people were coming mercenaries different people coming to form alliance between with him and to help him and of course in those days the strength of your kingdom and your dominion was based on your army your military might and they helped David against the bands of raiders is that verse 1 now these were the men who came to David at Ziklag while he was still a fugitive from Saul the son of Kish and they were among the mighty men help us in what help us in the war give give us 21 and 22 so this is the help of man now and they helped David against the bands of raiders for they were all mighty men of valor and they were captains in the army 22 for at that time they came to david day by day to help him 
until what it was a great army like the army of what so man can help you like we see in this scripture men began to come around david form alliances with him and he became strong by reason of the men he had around him and the bible says they came continually to help him until his army became a mighty army romans 16 verse 9 paul spoke about two people i think it's aquila and priscilla and paul categorically called them helpers helpers king james you'll find it in king james translation it says salute uh -huh. salute ubani our helper in christ paul had a ministry but he needed human help human support around him and there's an extent that the help of man can go for you why because man has dominion on earth so there is a level that the help of man can get to for you but one thing you must understand is that the help of man can fail it can expire it can be cut short in fact it can be cut off when you need it the most that's why it's not good to rely on man's help where we read in psalm 60 say give us help in trouble for what useless is the help of man jeremiah 17 in verse 5 and 6 i believe he said cost is the man that puts his trust in the arm of flesh cost what does it mean to be cost <laughs> it means to live a useless life it means to live a life that is good for nothing to live in in the midst of misfortune and to be unfortunate it means to live in a path that is headed for destruction the bible says when we trust in man in the arm of flesh what, what what's our lot cost give us the next verse he said, for he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes. Ah! But shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhabited. In other words, you would think that's the best you can get. But you will not be able to tap into God's best for you when you totally depend on man. When you depend on an uncle that is a senator or an auntie that is a businesswoman you know sometimes when we pray some prayers sometimes in the back of our mind we already calculate how god will answer the prayer okay this my uncle is a commissioner and this is my wedding i want to do he can give me two hundred thousand. that's the person's praying you know? and then behind his mind he's also making calculation you see that's why the bible says the heart of man is what deceitful how that your heart is talking to god and your heart is having another meeting elsewhere Your heart is saying, Lord, help me. Meanwhile, in the same heart, you are having a meeting in another hall. So, okay, uh, this wedding now, it will cost us two million. So, uh, this is my uncle that is commissioner of finance. Can give me uh, 300,000. This is my auntie that is working in ministry of works. Uh, she's stingy. Uh, last, last, 100. Uh -huh, this is my uncle in NMPC. Uh -huh. If I, what I'll do is I'll buy wine and go and meet him with the card. Are you know most <laughs> you know <laughs> you know we you know what we do sometimes let's say you have two people you are seeking help from and in your heart you believe this one can help me more so you you bring a pizza offerings to this one that will help more then this other one that you believe cannot do so much it doesn't really have anything you just send him a text and invite him then the one that you took card and everything to gives you 25,000 then the one you didn't take anything to is the one that gives you 200,000 how many of you have been there before everybody has been there before including me in fact sometimes when God just wants to embarrass me when I'm in need when I've calculated who and who okay this kind of need this one is in millions this is the person that can do it God will just come to another route I remember the first house I rented in this town the first person that gave me money was a student and I didn't ask. Meanwhile, the people I was sending texts to, after one more, they say, Ah, Apostle, sorry. Oh. Sorry. 
Sometimes that word is not too good though. And from that day, I vowed never to ask anybody. It's three years now, down the line. I vowed, as if it is need, is if God cannot do it for me, I will wait. I'm not under pressure. It's still getting to three years now. I have never asked anybody for a couple. I can stand here boldly and say it. And God has helped us this far. And I'm saying it to challenge you too. That you can prosecute destiny and be successful without asking for help. Yes. I'm not saying don't accept help. But I'm just saying you can do it without asking. Why ask men when you can ask the father of spirits? And once I've spoken to God, that's it. Though. I can go and sit down. Doesn't matter how many days. I know God is already working on my behalf. And then all of a sudden, like charm, you see some people. Even there, they don't know. I, I, uh, I remember something that happened this, this week. Just about it, two days ago, a day ago. In fact, the brother is here, but I will not mention his name. He came around to help me in my house to do something. And when he finished, he was about to go. I decided I was going to give him some money at least for transfer. So I was in the toilet. And I was debating in my heart. Should I give him this amount or this amount? A thousand naira or a bigger amount? Bigger, way bigger than that. And then in my heart, I said, Kai, uh, this thing that he did is not... It's not up to this big amount. So let me just give him. That's what happens. So that is how it happens. That's the debate that happens in the minds of people who should help you. That's why if you understand the formula spiritually. Yeah, yeah. I was there discussing. The young man went and took broom. I was sweeping again. When I came out and saw that one, I decided, I said, no, I will give him the big amount. May God give you the right wisdom. That will force your helpers to help you at all costs. That's how it happens. So the help of man can be good. The help of man can be so strong that you want to rely on it. But it's like relying on a broken chair that is standing. It will fall one day. They say some trust in chariots and some in horses. So that chariots and horses there is, is a figure of speech to mean all the systems that man can create. It looks strong. It looks like a firm support. He said, but some trust in chariots and in horses. But we will remember the name of our God. He didn't even say we'll remember God. We'll remember his name. His name alone is the covenant that he will help us. He said they are bowed down and they are fallen. Psalms 20 verse 8. He said, but we are arisen and we stand upright. In other words, those who decided to worship the help of man, he said they bow down. Bow down means worship. When you submit to the help of man, you are worshiping man. The Bible says they fell. He said, but we have risen and we stand upright. It's not arrogance. It's just to show you that there is a limit to how man can help you. And many of us are here, the way God had to help you was take away the person who started behaving like without him you will not exist, your benefactor. How many of you know what I'm talking about? And then one day the person just died or the person traveled and you are stranded. You know, you hear, you hear, you hear, even in churches you hear things like financial pillars are supporting the work. You can't support God's work. You can be a part of it. The Bible says we are partakers. It didn't say support. How can you support what supports you? I know somebody will say, um, this is arrogance. No, this is not arrogance. I, I respect and I treasure the help. I'm a man that has been helped by a system of men. I've seen countless times God go beyond my immediate environment and raise people. To, there is no place I go to in this country. I don't have people coming to help me. But let me tell you, you can't support God because He's the one supporting you. You know, so sometimes in church, because some people are doing good, they are always giving, every time there's need for something, they always give. And so the pastor, the leaders of the church, 
or the people around everybody begins to eye the person and revere the person that's what james preached about in james chapter 2 he said don't cause that kind of segregation where you keep a big honor for the rich and then you just trivialize the poor there's nothing like that because before god god is a respecter of no person so he said, ah this one is our financial pillar financial pillar then one day financial pillar loses his job so that the pastor the leader can turn back to the pillar the one that is called the rock of ages sometimes the names that god gives himself don't think he's cracking a joke nobody can can have those names except he has been proven with a track record how can god call himself rock of ages ages does not mean years ages means different dispensations that the age before genesis 1 is also referring to it whether in the age of spirit or in the age of human not species or in the age of adam or in our age is the rock of ages the rock of Gibraltar, the stone of help like samuel said in first samuel 7. i tell you you can depend on god and it will never fail dependable dependable god it doesn't matter what comes my way you are still god intentional intentional god sing everything is working out for my good everything is working out for my good one more time dependable god dependable dependable god it doesn't matter what comes my way you are still say intentional god is intentional about your miracle everything say everything is working say you are good you are good you are good jesus jesus you are good you are good you are Jesus, you are so good to me. Come on, sing it. Say it all. Oh, Jesus, you are so good to me. Hey. It all circumstances. is good at all times god is so good that even when you are bad he's mad at you but he's still good to you israel was getting on his nerves many times but god could not stop blessing them why because he had a covenant to bless them that's why it's good to depend on god he said for woe is the hell i don't know why i'm still on this point it looks like there's somebody that God is giving a reorientation. I don't know what, what place in life you are in now. But it's time for you to stop trusting a man. Uh, you know what trust means? Trust is not faith. Oh. Trust is higher than faith. Faith is a product of your spirit. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of God that comes to your spirit. Triggers faith. And then you can believe God trust is when you now go beyond faith beyond that trigger to say lord whether you pull the trigger or not i trust you i depend on you say for vain is the help of man number three different kinds of help we also have the help of creation ah creation too can help you Plants and inanimate things can help you. Let me tell you the truth. A spiritual man understands that everything has the ability to hear and to respond. Everything. Everything. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 verse 3, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things that appear were not made by things that we see everything and how did god create he spoke 
and everything had the ability to listen and to act according as God has spoken. So creation too can help a man. The Bible says in Judges chapter 5 verse 20 that the stars fought for Deborah. When Deborah and Barak was fighting against Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, Bible tells us that Jabin had 900 chariots of iron. Chariots were, were like armor tanks in those days, APCs, armored personnel carriers. So the strength of a man's military, the strength of a nation's military, were dependent on how many chariots they had. Now in those days, chariots were made of wood. But the Bible says Sisera had, Jabin had 900 chariots of iron. That means they couldn't break. And those, those chariots on the wheels, they had spokes that were very sharp. So not only could they drive the soldiers to kill the enemy, but anything that that chariot passes is destroyed. And the king had 900 of them coming against one tribe of Israel, a ragtag army. How many weapons did, did Barak and Deborah had? But they understood the help of God through creation. And the Bible says the stars fought. The elements can fight for you. The sun can fight for you. He fought for Joshua in Joshua chapter 10. Joshua was surrounded by five kings. And it looked to him like the day, the battle will not end before that day was over. It's like Joshua knew that the strength of the enemy was in the darkness. And he knew that if night come while he's still fighting this battle, he's in soup. This was one nation against five. There are, th there are places of desperation you get to in life. You need supernatural intervention, I'm telling you. Not English. You need supernatural. And the Bible says Joshua stood. And he said, let the sun stand still. And let the moon remain in the valley of Aijalon. It's as though the, the night was going to be the strength of the enemy. While the day was the strength of Joshua. So Joshua decided, okay, let this day be suspended into two days. And the Bible says, never before or never after had God hearkened to the voice of a man like that. And the sun stood still. If you know God enough, creation can help you. That's where we get miracle money from. And I've had it many times. Many times. When things around can help you. One time I was boiling water in my house. And you know this whistle kettle. You know. So I put it there on gas. Gas, oh, not charcoal. Not kerosene. Amen. That's our level by the grace of God. And we are not coming down in Jesus' name. They don't burn the devil well. We, are, we can't come down. Amen. The days of fanning charcoal are over. And I put on the gas. I put it to boil very quick. So I put it on high flame. And then I went about doing other things. And later I had to see people. For three hours, kettle was on stove. Boiling. And the water was just one quarter of the kettle. For three hours. Ooh, there was somebody in my house that day that is a witness. I don't know. It was on a Monday. For three hours, water had dried up. Gas was still burning. That would have been a fire outbreak, isn't it? Abba. But the gas stove knows that it was placed there to help the one that has been helped by God. So creation can help. Especially when you are praying warfare prayers. And don't worry, I'm going to teach you later in this year when we start talking about spiritual warfare. I'll show you from scripture some prayers to pray. The, way, the kind of prayer Joshua prayed. One time when Moses was angry with the rebels under him, he commanded the earth to open and swallow them. And the Bible says while he was still speaking, the earth opened and... <laughs> can I prophesy to you? If poverty is your enemy, if sickness and affliction is your enemy, if lack is your enemy, if evil is your enemy, then the earth will bury your enemies. I said the earth will bury your enemies. In the name of Jesus. Sit down, we're almost done. And finally, 
the help of God. So we have self-help. We have the help of man. The help of creation. And then we have the help of God. The help of God. The help of God. Psalms 10 verse 14. The help of God. The help of God. He said, but you have seen. For you observe trouble and grief. To repay it by your hand. The helpless commits himself to you. Read the last part of that verse. One to go. You are the helper. That's his name. The helper. Oh, I like God. I like God. He gives himself that name. So you, you know that that's the last and only option. You are the helper of the fatherless. Hebrews 13 verse 6. He said, for he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He says, so I may say, so we may boldly say, the Lord is my what? Helper. That's his name. That's the name of the Holy Ghost. John 14 verse 26. John 15. That's the name of the Holy Ghost. The helper. The help of God. Now the thing is, when God decides to help a man, that man becomes a beneficiary naturally of the remaining three. Self-help, the help of man, the help of creation. Where it's like A, option A, option B, option C, option D, all of the above. Which one will you go for? All of the above. So when God decides to be your helper, the rest must help you. That's when you know that God, God can put pressure on people and make them lose their sleep till they bless you. It's possible, it's true. Just the way I was thinking in my bathroom about blessing that young man. That's how God can put it in somebody's thought. Somebody is fasting and praying. Three days fasting. He's praying for something and God is showing him your face. Showing him your face. He's fasting and praying. Meanwhile, you, you are just somewhere cooking. There is something that makes me come into your presence. My help. And giving him praise. And then God said, okay. Then the man that is fasting and praying for three days. God is All that God is showing him is your face. Vision, your face. Dream, your face. It's praying your face. Why? And God says, help that person. Sometimes the way God even for it will be like you are bullying them. God will say, empty your account and give that person. One time I was, <laughs> I was told there was a, a dear woman who came to our service. And I, she, she came to see me. I didn't know. She had a bag. And inside the bag was money. Heavy money for me. I didn't know. And when she came after the service, I just dismissed her very quick because I was tired. She said, oh, okay, okay, we'll see. Just go. See me. Oh, I don't know that my helper was standing before me. And two or three days later, when she came to see me, she came with it. Are you saying that for 48, 72 hours, there was no need for that money? When God vows to help a man. Ah, tonight, you are, in fact, this night begins a season in your life. Yeah. Where God decides at all costs to help you. Yeah. God told Abimelech in Genesis 20. He said, you are a dead man. Because that man, that man you have touched. It's like trade and butter Abraham did. The first time he went to Egypt in Genesis 13 with his wife. They saw his wife and took her to Pharaoh. And then God came and troubled the house of Pharaoh. And they returned her back. And returned her with riches. Gold, silver and cattle. And then Abraham left Egypt. Then, you know that's like you pay bright price. And later you collect. <laughs> so it was as if there was something about Sarah. Women are blessed though. It was as if there was somebody, something about saying anywhere she goes, she must magnet. May God put that anointing on somebody's life. Yeah. Eh? That wherever you enter, you attract help. It's a very good place to live, I'm telling you. It's possible. It's not, it, this is not thin trick. It's possible. Many of us have enjoyed almost every other thing but help. When it's time for, for your own issue, nobody arises for you. May God, the God who is the helper of the helpless, arise for you today. Yeah. When people fight to bless you, they fight. They are fighting. You say no. 
they insist you say no one week later they still come you say no they say pray about it now they won't help you that only happens when the help of God is around you now how do you provoke divine help let's let's do this and we pray tonight is a very long night how can you provoke the help of God four powerful keys leave this service with these keys and make sure you practice it these are things that have worked for me again and again and again number one unwavering trust in God unwavering trust unwavering like waver unwavering trust meaning a trust that is complete a trust that is intact not shaking like a reed in the sea not dilly darling the bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways not that kind of trust you put one leg here and you put the other leg here one leg with jehovah the other leg with amadioha not that kind of trust no you go to service and sow seed in the morning and in the night you go before a shrine. No, 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 no. I'm talking about complete. You see, many people feel that's too risky. But that risk is called faith by the scripture. Unwavering trust. Do you know that God is addicted to people who trust him with complete resolution? Your trust, your total trust in God puts a pressure on God. If you have not seen it before, it's because you have not tried it. Unwavering trust. Psalms 125 verse 1 and 2. It said, those who trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion that can never be moved. He said, and as the mountain surrounds Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people. Why? Because they trust in the Lord. So God surrounds them. He becomes jealous about them. He defends their territorial integrity. You need to get to that point as a man where God is jealous about your life. That's why those kind of people cannot die anyhow. He was jealous about Abraham like that. And so scripture tells us in Psalms 105 verse 15, he says, He suffered no man to do them wrong. He rebuked kings for their sake, saying, Touch not my anointed. Nowhere was oil poured on Abraham's head. But because God was jealous about Abraham's complete trust in him. Do you think it's easy to trust God like that? God brought him out of his economy. God brought him out of his father's house, out of his nation. Abraham had never gone anywhere beyond his nation before. God said, go out to a desert land and I will bless you. And he abandoned everything and walked out. Listen, let me tell you the truth. Until you walk away from certain things, you cannot walk into the things God has created for you. I tell you the truth. And you think God will play with that kind of a man. He has sacrificed his life on the, on the altar of trust. That means if God failed or if God was lying, he had failed. And Abraham didn't go alone. He went with people. So God, God was under pressure to bless him. So much was that pressure that when he came back from war one time, God had to appear as Melchizedek to him. Unwavering trust. If God can raise men in his kingdom that trust him completely, trust God for that project, trust God for that business, trust God for that ministry. There are many people who are called into ministry and they are afraid of venturing because they know it will test their trust capacity. So you have to learn it. Oh. You have to learn how to fast by morning and believe God that what you will break your fast with will come. I'm not talking about the fast of, you know, this... These people, they are fast. They've grounded the tomato, done everything. They just kept it somewhere and they are waiting for time. Not the kind of fast where you say, okay, I, I, we are fasting for 21 days, okay. Eh. Then you rush to the market as if it's locked down. You know, during the lockdown, when they announced that there was going to be locked down for this, everybody was rushing to stock up. It's good to do that. But that's not the kind of trust. Then when he during the Lord, I say, ah, I'm living in abundance. No. Complete trust. This ministry is built on that platform, trust. I was in Abuja. God said, go back. Go back to where? 
I don't know anybody. I don't have any uncle that is anything. Maybe by the grace of God, I'll be the first or the biggest success story from where I come from. Maybe. So there's nobody to rely on. Not the type that you have an in-law that will bless you with 14 million and say, ah, you are going into ministry. Okay, take this. We started from the scratch with nothing. You remember one of our trips to Bill? We went on a mission trip to go and preach. There was no transport. And I was standing on a pulpit and fire was coming and hitting everybody and my pocket was empty. When we go back with him, we'll go and pray all through the night. Part of that prayer is God must provide. But we trusted God. We trusted God. And here we are today by the grace of God. And it's the same formula that will take us from here to where he wants us to be. Unwavering trust. Jeremiah 17, 7 to 8. He said, blessed is the man who puts his trust in God. He said, he shall, whose hope is in the Lord. He shall be like a tree. Look at that verse. That is planted by the riverside, right? For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river. It's tapping into the river bed, where there is the source of water. And he said, it will not fear when it comes, but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought nor will cease from yielding fruit. Why? Because it's connected. That's what it means to trust God. You are connected to the source, so you cannot shake. One of my mentors would usually say, God is my source. I cannot fail. I cannot fail. I cannot fail. Learn to put complete... You want to see the help of God? Learn to trust God. God is mad about people that trust Him. And many of us are in the journey of trust. Yeah. Many of us. Even your marriage is a journey of trust. I remember one of our brothers who was to get married. Where is, I think, I think it's Brother Manga, right? Uh -huh. I, can I say this part? The television part? I can say it, but... Uh -huh. He was to get married. He didn't have television. Abby? And he didn't bother. You know, in our days now, if you want to get married, you rent a flat, stock it up, God is expensive. Marriage is, a, is an enterprise on its own. It's a business enterprise. Millions enter there. Bro, Timothy is looking at me. <laughs> huh? And he was to get married, no television. What will you put for, for your wife? You, you are a prayer man, you bo 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 bo. But your wife must watch. But God raised somebody from somewhere to buy the television for him. I, I, I believe trust many of us who don't like it like that say no money for hand mouth for ground mouth for ground go fall yakata somebody shout hallelujah so number one unwavering trust in god number two okay just hear this before we go to number two trusting in god is a total dependence on god his ability to perform and the integrity of his word that never fails trusting in god is a total dependence on god his ability to perform and the integrity of his word that never fails number two how to provoke the help of god engage the ministry of prayers engage the ministry of prayers Psalms 18 verse 3 one of the songs we used to sing those days I will call upon the Lord you know that song if you don't know that song you didn't go to Sunday school those days they used to keep you in the car you know some of you are like that they keep you in the car huh but those days in old Sunday school meetings you know that time there were no instruments in church it's clapping of hand I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised so shall i be saved from my the lord reign hey blessed be the lord let the rock of my salvation 
salvation be exalted. The Lord reigneth. Blessed be the Lord. Let the wrongs of my salvation be exalted. You see, I will call upon the Lord. Who is worthy to be praised? That's an example of prayer. I will call. I will call upon the Lord. I will call. We have many needs around us, but when was the last time you called on God? Prayer. A very powerful way to engage the help of God. Psalm 61 verse 1 to 2. It says, Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayers. From the ends of the earth, I will cry unto you. Even when my heart is overwhelmed, he said, lead me safely to the rock that is higher. Hear my cry. Hear my cry. It's a prayer that goes from the heart of a man that is desperate in need. It's telling God that if you don't help me, I'm in trouble. I'm finished. Have you gotten to that point before? The number of times you've gotten there is the number of times you've seen miracles. I'm talking about mind-blowing miracles. You know, there are some miracles that will make you afraid. You become scared. Like the one that happened to me in January. For many days, I was scared that bank would call me. Not miracle money of 5,000, 10,000, 100,000. I'm talking. It happens by prayer. Prayer. Psalm 65, verse 1 to 2. It says, Praise waited for you in Zion. Unto you shall the vow be performed. Verse 2. O you that hears prayers, unto you shall all flesh. O you that hears. It's like you are. He, he, put, he puts God's, God's CV there first. O thou that heareth prayer. If there is a God to hear and answer, there is a man that should pray telling you Psalm 34 verse 4 and 5 he said I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears prayer you want to see the help of God stop grumbling stop murmuring pray stop asking questions pray there is nothing that worrying will produce worry only produce fear worries only produce discouragement and depression and dis dis despair Worry brings you into destruction before it happens. Why worry when you can pray? There's a sticker like that. They used to put those old, old in this. Say, why worry when you can pray? Tenacious prayer. Like the type that Isaac did in Genesis 25 verse 21. Isaac saw that generational curse was already working. And his wife had no child. The Bible says, and Isaac entreated the Lord. When you look up that word and treat it, it was talking about passionate prayer. It's like a prayer that disturbs God until God acts. It's not because God is sleeping or God is not hearing you, no. But God wants to see how desperate you are to see his hand come to work in that situation. God also wants to see if you truly believe. Because when you keep praying to God on a matter, even when you have not seen the solution, but you stay in prayer, what you are telling God is, I know that outside you, this help cannot come. You imagine that someone does that to you. Someone comes to wait for you in your office and he waits for five hours until he sees you. And you come and they tell you this person has been waiting for five hours or in your house. I hope you know pressure is on you to help that person. You feel like you are owing the person. Now that's what happens when you wait on God in prayer. You stay on an issue. Like the song that they sang during the spirituality ministration. If you don't help me, where else can I go? That's what your passionate and consistent prayer is telling God. You want to see the help of God? Have you prayed? Have you engaged prayer? And by the time God answered Isaac and Rebecca became pregnant, there was a problem with the pregnancy. So she had learnt the formula for Isaac. The Bible says she went back to God in verse 22 and entreated the Lord. Women, learn how to pray, I'm telling you. Women, I beg you in the name of God, learn how to pray. 
There are a lot of women who, who are prayerful before they get married. The moment they get married, they backslide. It's like they take 10 steps backward. And then they take 10 more steps when they become pregnant. By the time they, are, they, have, they have the second pregnancy, they've taken 30 steps. They don't even know how to pray. How do you know? You find them beginning to speak like unbelievers. Just the way Job's wife was so blessed, she forgot about God. And when the blessing is left, she said, curse God and die. That's the wife of the most righteous man on earth that time. Women, I beg you, learn how to pray. No, I don't need to tell the men because the Bible says men ought always to. I don't need to tell. It's men that was written there. But I beg the women. Don't wait till you get to labor room and you are between life and death. God, save me. Oh. Is that after all? The Bible says, hear my cry. Not that kind of cry. Faithless cry. Are we ready for God's help tonight? You know, prayer is one of the initial evidence of humility. It takes a humble person to pray. Humble enough to accept and to believe that God hears and God will answer. First John 5 14. He says, This is the confidence that we have in Him that whatever we ask of Him, whatever. So you want to see the help of God? Prayer number two. Number three, engage the power of praise and thanksgiving. Ah. Engage the power of what? Praise. All this singing and you, I'm not wasting time. Oh. This is how I get God. Oh. You need to watch me in my room. There are dance, I don't dance here. One day I will come and practice it here. And then when you finish laughing at me, you will now know why I always walk in the miraculous. Praise. God does not listen to murmuring. He listens to praise. God inhabits the praise of his people. When you pray, you are fighting. But when you praise, God fights for you. Ask Jehoshaphat, 2 Chronicles chapter 20. We had the prophecy. God said, you will not fight this battle. I'll fight. And then he gathered the choir and they started to sing praises to God. And the Bible says in verse 22, I believe, it said God caused ambushment. God said that he went to the enemy's camp and made them kill themselves. Because people praised. Don't underestimate the power of praise. Don't under. In fact, when prayer seems not to work, switch to praise. He's a miracle walking God. He's a miracle walking God. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's the miracle walking God. Miracle walker. He's a miracle walking God. He's a miracle walking God. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's a miracle. Hold it. You see, let me just calm down. We'll, we'll, we'll go there. Let me let me hold myself. Huh? Praise oh. Don't underestimate the power of praise. Listen to this. Israel kept murmuring. But with all their murmuring for 40 years, they still saw the hand of God. Think of it. If they kept praising in place of murmuring, maybe God would have appeared himself. Do you think about it? Reason it. In the midst of their murmuring and grumbling, God will come and say, Moses, leave. I want to kill these people. Yet, they saw God's power. Imagine if they had exchanged their murmuring for praise. Praise. When prayer is not working for me, I switch to praise. In fact, there are some prayers I want to pray. Eh? I don't start with tongues. I start with praise first. Then dance to God and praise God for one hour. Dance till you are invigorated with the spirit of praise. Instead of prayer that will come out of your mouth, it's prophecy. Answers to your desires. In fact, if you want to have victory in spiritual warfare at all times, which is our pressing you, become a Somebody danced and a prophet's head was removed. If a prophet's head could be removed from a dance, is it the head of a demon? 
There are some warfare you engage by praise. You praise all night. You dance before God like a madman. Thanksgiving as little okay. You, you you don't like praise. You are too ashamed to pray to praise God. Then you are too ashamed for a miracle anyway. You don't like praise. How about Thanksgiving? Wake up in the morning. The first thing that comes out of your mouth. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Say it again. Say it another time. All of a sudden you feel light. In the midst of good and bad, thank you, Jesus. Jesus stood before a dead man for four days. What did he say? Thank you. They gave him five loaves of bread and two fishes. Five thousand men. When the Bible says five thousand men, that means the women and children should be fifteen thousand. Where do you start from? Now riot you want create. What was the first thing that came out of his mouth? Thank you. In fact, the more difficult the situation is, is the more you should give God praise. You are a businessman or woman. You, are, you rear a poultry farm. You wake up one morning. 25 beds are dead. Thank you, Jesus. Apostle, are you serious? Thank you. 25 beds are dead. Where do I start from? Heat has come again. This is where the Nawao. Thank you, Jesus. Dance around that poultry. That's the reason why my response to any kind of prayer point or problem you send to me is what it is well that's the first thing you know why because i know god was there before that he was he got to the problem before you when the children of israel got to a place called mara the water there was bitter the bible says god showed moses a tree that means that the tree was growing there while they were in egypt god knew the very day they will have need for water so years before they came he caused the tree to grow there god is not preparing the miracle when you are in the situation no he has prepared the miracle before the situation who am i talking to tonight it's to you that there's past present and future no he saw your begin your end from the beginning never underestimate the power of praise and thanksgiving do you know that praise is the gestation period for every miracle let me say it again praise is the gestation period for every miracle what is gestation nine months don't be so all the months in a pregnancy is called gestation the growing of the child praise is the gestation period for every miracle that means your miracle grows in an atmosphere of praise Oh, somebody needs to hear me tonight. And we'll stand up to praise very soon. And then number four, finally, and we close. You want to see the help of God. You want to provoke God's help in desperate times. Number one, I said, unwavery trust in God. Number two, I said, engage the ministry of prayer. Number three, engage the power of praise and thanksgiving. Number four, the ministry of the prophetic the ministry of the prophetic now let me tell you something about the prophetic the bible says in romans chapter 4 verse 17 it describes god's nature the nature of god's operations it said god is the god that quickens the dead and calleth those things that are not as though they were psalms 33 verse 6 he said by the word of the lord were the heavens made and the host of them by the breath of his mouth that means everything was created by God's word. He spoke and it was created. That is the action of the prophetic. Where there is a human representative of, a vo of the voice of God to bring you into your necessary divine seasons according as God has proposed it. Where there is a man that God places to stand on the behalf of God to speak forth and create certain possibilities that he thought were not there. That's the prophetic. It must happen because it was spoken. Hosea 12 verse 13. He said by a prophet he brought them out of Egypt. Egypt represents sin, affliction, bondage, oppression, sickness. Everything you can think of. He said but by a prophet. Not by an army. By one prophet. 
one of the ways you can provoke the help of god is expose yourself to the ministry of the prophetic find a human representative of the voice of god that can unlock certain doors that are closed that can break certain gates of brass was it not a prophecy that came that said i will go before you and cut break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder how will he do it by the speaking of his word you must expose yourself to the prophetic every time you are in the midst of a crisis or you are in a tight corner i need to ask you when was the last time a prophetic word came to you i'm not just talking about people who just want to wish you well or they just want to talk for them sake i'm talking about people that have on them the seal of divine authority when they speak even when god didn't talk god is obligated to fulfill it because they are his mouthpiece it is important that the, i know that a lot has been done about the prophetic in our time but brothers and sisters believe that god still uses that door believe it i'm telling you i'm a product of prophecies prophecies plenty that doesn't mean i go to church only to look for prophecy no the bible says the sure word of prophecy is the word of god but i'm always ready to receive so when i when we stand and i begin to speak over your life i'm not just talking what you don't see is a key through those words opening every door that has been closed in your life there are things god has prepared for you in april but it will take the prophetic to unlock it that's why miracle service is the first sunday of the month before you get into the month so by that by the power of the prophetic you everything that god has designed for you you have access into it the prophetic son of man ezekiel 37 say to these bones the question is why did god not say to the bones she he could talk the word of the lord in the mouth of god didn't do anything to the dry bones they remain dry but the word of the lord in the mouth of ezekiel turned dry bones to an army when there was famine in samaria and people were eating their children the king was angry with the prophet not with the minister of finance or the minister of agriculture it was the prophet because he knew that if i have a prophet in my territory i should enjoy prosperity i should enjoy and truly as he did in 24 hours it was turned around you must be exposed some of us are exposed but we trivialize it so the words are of no effect the bible says in hebrews chapter 4 verse 2 that they heard the same gospel that we heard but it did not work for them because it was not mixed with faith some of us trivialize it too much oh he just said god bless you i was expecting him to do you know in the realm of the spirit it's not the correctness of your grammar We're in the car one day and we're listening to a great minister of uh, a music minister of the gospel he said I, I speak spirit i don't speak english i don't know that song you have to believe it god that's it for you to move from point a to point b in destiny including me that is talking to you and will prophesy to you i know when it's time for a shift in my life and i look for the vessels god has created i know what to do to provoke it because that's how you move from your divine seasons one level into another if it was by a prophet he brought them out it was by a prophet he preserved them the ministry of the prophetic and you know what the reason why number three is praise and number four is the prophetic is because one of the sharpest routes to the prophetic is praise in fact anything spoken in an atmosphere of praise is prophetic did you hear what i said worship him anything spoken in an atmosphere of praise is what prophetic so when you are leading praise or worship and you begin to speak you are prophet you have entered the prophetic dimension of your ministry but you need to believe in yourself too are we ready tonight stand on your feet let's pray if you don't help me where else can i go nowhere nowhere if you don't heal me where else can i go nowhere 
tonight all standing everywhere just be still wherever you are no movement I feel like in my spirit I should give the altar call now I've spoken to us about the help of God of all the things that God can help a man from God can help a man from sin to the salvation of his soul I want to give the altar call now so that when you get born again you can be part of everything that God will do because any man that is not born again is outside of the reach of the help of God help is only released to those that are of the covenant no movement everywhere everybody standing if you are here and Jesus is not Lord over your life you have not received him into your heart or perhaps you were born again but you are struggling with a lot of things addictions all kinds of things around you and right now you don't even know whether you are still in faith you need the help of God the help that you need now is called salvation for God to redeem you from the clutches of sin from the clutches of darkness and to make you his child and make you his own if you are here and you need to say yes to Jesus or you once were born again and you need to rededicate your life afresh wherever you are i want you unashamedly to raise your right hand to him help will only come to people who are humble enough to admit that they have come to the end of themselves there's no need to be ashamed here you say right now i know that i need jesus desperately or i know right now that i may not really be with god like i was before lift your right hand up to heaven he wants to help you tonight lift your right hand if you are here before we pray lift those hands God bless you God bless you lift those hands lift those hands to him now if you are lifted your right hand I want you to come to the front I want to pray for you and I want us to give God a big clap of hand for them as they come come to Jesus this is not a show this is not drama you know that you need help you need to be saved Forget about who is around you and come to him. Run away from pride. Run away from sin. Run away from the enemy and come to his help. Keep clapping. They are coming. He said there is no other name given amongst men whereby we can be saved. The name of Jesus, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it and they are safe. Church, can we stretch our right hands towards these ones and pray for them? Those of you in front, you have acknowledged that you need the help of God. You need to be saved. You need to be restored. I want you with your eyes closed and your right hand on your chest, say these words after me. I mean it desperately. Don't just say it because you have come to recite prayer. Mean it from your heart. You are about to be transformed. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I repent of my sin. I admit that I cannot help myself. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for saving me. I receive eternal life. And I declare that you are my Lord 
and Savior. I will serve you now and forever in Jesus' name. Now put your right hand on your chest continually. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray for these ones in the name of Jesus. The very name that has brought salvation to mankind. And I declare by the authority of your word that their sins are forgiven. I declare that they are born again. I declare from today that they have victory over sin, over Satan, and over death. And I declare that they will love you and serve you all the days of their lives. Thank you for saving them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Those of you in front, I acknowledge what you have done. I appreciate your boldness of coming out and receiving Jesus. We have people who will talk to you and help you on your path to knowing God and being a Christian. Just look towards your right. There's a lady there waving her hand. Follow her. She will lead you to our counselors quickly. And then they will take your information and you can come back and join the prayer. If you want to clap, clap. You don't know what it means for people to be saved. They have passed from death to life. That's what scripture said. Being born again is more than just having a Christian name. It's knowing that you belong to the family of faith. Are we ready to pray tonight? Can you lift your hands and say, Lord, thank you for your word that has come this evening. If you know that the word of God has come to open your eyes, understanding has come to you. I taught you about thanksgiving. In 60 seconds, would you give God thanks for what you have heard? Because what you have heard tonight is your liberation. What you have heard is setting you free from everything that you have been entangled in. Open your mouth and practice one of the points. Thanksgiving. Give Him thanks. Understanding has come. Knowledge has come. So I, I run to you. So I, I, I run to you. So I, I, I run to you. So I, I, I run to you. Alabako siyahama. So I. I Sweet Jesus, you're the wind within my wings. You know that song? Sweet Jesus, you're my and harmony. Sweet Jesus, help me now. You're the eyes that I see through. I sing it. Sweet Jesus, that's the song I'm hearing. You're I'm dancing to your tune. For as the deep and the water soul, my soul longs for you forever and ever. This heart beats for you. For as the deep and the water soul, my soul longs for you. You are reaching out to him for help. This heart beats for you. Something more than cold. I got something more than cold. Something more than silver. I got something more than gold. If all I have is Jesus, I got something more than gold. Say, I fell into the world. Jesus is more than gold. Something more than gold. One more time. Something more than gold. I got something more than gold. Something more than gold. Yeah. Something more than life. I got something more than If all I have is Jesus, I got something. I fell into the wall. Jesus is more than more than gold. Say more than gold, more than gold. I got something more than gold. 
You see, whenever I sing like this, listen, listen, listen. One of the ways my anointing works is through songs. Are you hearing me? I'm not singing special number. Sometimes I'm singing because I can see angels already moving. Okay? More than go. You see, this kind of song is your best way to express to God that He is all that you have. Imagine if somebody calls you and is asking you for something and the person reminds you to please help him because you are the last hope. You know the pressure that is on you, ba? Now, when you sing this song, that's what you are putting on God now. That what you have, which is Jesus Christ, is more than gold, is more than silver. Meaning that God is about to do for you what money cannot do. Meanwhile, the Bible says money answered all things. But there are things that money cannot do that God wants to do for you. Now, I want you to open your mouth if you know the song. By now, the song song should be projected so that we can sing it together. More than gold, I've got something more than gold. Something more than silver, I've got something more than silver. Save all I have, if all I have is Jesus. I've got something more than gold. I tell it to the world. Jesus is more Say more than, more than gold, more than gold, more than gold. I've got something more than gold. I fell into the wall. Jesus is more than gold. Say more than gold, more than gold, more than gold. I've got something more than I fell into the world. Jesus is more than gold, more than gold. Say, I've got something more than gold. Come on, declare, I fell into the world. Jesus is more than gold. Something more than gold. I've got something more than gold. Something more than gold. I've got something more than gold. If all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I fell into the wall. Jesus, you are great, yes, you are. Holy Lord. You walked upon the sea, you raised the dead. Troubles are coming back to life now. You reign in majesty. I see God already turning around things for somebody. Everything about you is Say, be most tremble at your presence. Be most tremble at Come on, you guys sing with life. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Everything, everything. Everything, about you. Sing the most tremble at your presence. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Everything, everything. Everything, everything about you. Just the drums and the verses. Say you are great. You are great. You are great. You are great. I tell you, a miracle is already happening for somebody. You are great. Come on, scream it out. You are Say you are great. You are great. Walked upon the sea. You are great. Everything. Everything about you is great. Come on, one more time. Say you are great. You are great. You are great.
Just one prayer you pray tonight. Just one. Listen. While we were singing, I saw chronic waste pain leaving somebody now. While we were singing, I just saw waste pain leaving somebody. Chronic. Meaning that it, it's, it's something that has been for a while. I saw it just leave you right now while we were singing. One prayer we are going to pray. You know, when you need the help of God, you don't have, there are not too many prayer points. The prayer is simple. Lord, help me. Mark chapter 9. The Bible spoke about a man that brought his son to Jesus. Who was possessed. Jesus told him, if you believe, all things are possible. What did he tell Jesus? He said, I believe. Help thou. Help. It's a desperate prayer. Lord, help. It's as though you are, you are out of strength. You are out of options. You are tired of that situation. You have done everything you can do. You've prayed, you've fasted, you've sown seed. You've done everything and nothing is moving. There's just one prayer to pray. Lord, help. Shout, Lord, help. Shout it again. Lord, help. Lord, help. Lord, help. Turn it to prayer right now. Help me in that situation. Help me in that body. Help me out of that pain. Help me out of that affliction. Somebody need to open your mouth and scream. Open your mouth and cry to God. Help. Help. The psalmist says, give us help from trouble. For vain is the help of man. Give us help for trouble. For vain is the help of man. I'm tired of this situation. I'm tired of this delay. Oh, that God will arise for me. Come on, cry to me. Help, oh God. There is something that makes me come into your presence. Help, oh my God. There is something that makes me come into your presence. My help, my help, There is something that makes me come into your presence. I'm a Kusama. My God, I feel the anointing. Help me, oh God. Help my family. Help my career. Help my spiritual life. Help my finances. Arise. Help out of the helpless. Arise. Help out the fatherless. Hey, <laughs> I you 
thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my own. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my hand, but thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter Can you lift your hands to heaven, whether you are kneeling or you are standing? This is the formula for the night. I'm going to make a prayer right now, generally. And while I make that prayer, the Lord's angels that are here will begin to walk. And then after the prayer, we are going to praise God for three minutes. And then take testimonies of what God has done. In the midst of those praises, a lot of healings will happen. A lot of breakthroughs will happen. A lot of miracles will happen. Lift your hands if you are expectant. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Answer like you truly need the help of God. Father, I've spoken to your people about your help. Lord, I pray that you prove yourself tonight. You call for this meeting because you are indeed arising to help your children. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that your power will begin to move across this hall from side to side, from front to back. Let sicknesses be healed now. Let bodies be lifted now. Let oppressions be destroyed now. Let the power of witchcraft be broken now. I declare an atmosphere of miracles now. In the name of Jesus. Father, let your power manifest in this place. That your children will know that you are indeed the helper of the helpless. And that you have a reason for them. Let every long-standing condition give way tonight. Father, I pray for those who are following online right now. We send the power of God to them wherever they are. Let your power locate them and bring a transformation. Let your power occasion a visitation over their lives. Father, anyone that came here with a family member or a friend that is sick, right now there is no distance in the realm of the spirit. I ask that your angels be released. Let healing and miracles come to them right now. That as your people praise and dance before you, let there be instant testimonies from those people. Let everyone that is paralyzed stand up from their chairs and beds. Let the cripples stand up now. Let the sick be healed completely. In the name of Jesus, shout a big, big Amen. Now listen to me we are going to praise are you ready are you ready uh -huh. we are going to praise god for three minutes this is instruction for the night just three minutes this is what i want you to do during the praise god is already visiting people now in fact there is an angel of breakthrough that is here an angel called breakthrough the lord told me this morning when i was praying then we will release an angel called breakthrough. I don't know that there's an angel like that called breakthrough. God is about to break through for somebody. While the praise is going on, if you were sick, check yourself, whatever the ailment is. If you notice that you are healed or you are better, please run. Where's Pastor Sam? Please, I need you. You are going to work today very well. And Bishop as well. Run to the front, meet Pastor Sam or Bishop. We will take your testimony. If you notice any miracle at all that has happened, some of you alerts can come on your phone right now. 
males can enter. And maybe you need to leave your data on. If you notice any miracle at all, I want you to run out. And let's take your testimony. Why the praise goes on. And listen, why the praise is also going on. If you have a friend or family member that is sick, I just pray now. The angel of God has been sent. Call them and find out how they are doing. If you notice a miracle, please run. Don't keep your testimony. The last testimony you kept was the door you opened for the devil into your life. Run to the front and let's take your testimony and disgrace the devil. How many of you are ready to give God three minutes of praise? Listen, I didn't say pray. I said praise. Huh? What a marvelous God. What a marvelous God. He has done marvelous things for me. What a marvelous God. What a marvelous. He's still doing marvelous things for me. You know the song, sing. What a marvelous God. What a marvelous God. He has done marvelous things for me. What a marvelous God. What a marvelous. He's still doing marvelous things for me. One, two, three. Hold on, come, Alpha, come. I need you here. He's a miracle walking God. You know that song? He's a miracle walking God. He's the Alpha and the He's the Come on, yeah. He's the miracle walker. Come on. Are you just looking at me? Chioma me, Chioma. Chioma me, Chioma. Aya, Aya, Chioma, 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 Chioma. Aya, ya, 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 ya. Rata kaba, Aya, Chioma, 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 Chioma. Chioma me, Chioma. Chioma me, Chioma. Chioma me, Chioma. Chioma me, Chioma. Aya, Chioma me, Chioma. Aya, Chioma me, Chioma. Let's go. Aya, Chioma, 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 Chioma. Hey, Ola, Ibe. Wait, 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 you people are too cold, man, you are too cold, ha, ole, igwe, ole, igwe, ole, igwe, eh, is that how you call igwe, eh, you need to shout it very well, are you ready, let's go, ole, igwe, ole, igwe, ole, igwe, I love what you are doing, igwe, 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 Ah, 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 ah,
told me he just healed hepatitis now. Yes. Huh? The healing anointing is working. Lift your hands everywhere. In your presence there's the anointing. Your spirit moves around me. In your prayer. The healing anointing is strong in this place. In your presence, there's the anointing. Your spirit moves around me. In your presence, anointing praise the Lord. The Lord 
God is also healing diabetes now. Diabetes. I heard that. Diabetes. It seems God is handling terrible cases. There's somebody I'm seeing with pain around your side, like your ribs. Excruciating pain. You are, it's difficult to move on that side of your body. God is healing you right now. You can feel something moving around that place. God is touching you. I'm seeing somebody with pains around your heart, where your heart is. Right now, God is touching you and healing you. I rebuke sickness right now. I rebuke diseases right now. I rebuke infirmities right now. And I declare the healing power of God to move now. The healing power of God flows into this place now. Be healed of in your bodies. Be healed in your mind. Your spirit moves around me in your presence. Bone conditions are healed now. Bone conditions. Bone, whatever kind of bone condition. Pain, dislocation, whatever bone condition is healed right now. Is healed right now. Is healed right now. Every form of headache, every form of terrible headache is leaving you right now. As I speak, it's going now. As I speak, it's going now. In the name of Jesus. Wave your hands and give him praise. Do something new in our lives. Something new. Yes, sir, let me hear you. Apostle, this is Sister Ene Ame. She came into the service with a waist pain that last Waist pain? Yes, sir. You heard the word, waist pain. If you were celebrating me, I will not accept this. Jesus. How long? For over a month. For over a month. Yes, sir. She received her healing instantly in the service. Give God a big hand of praise. God is healing. God is healing. God is still healing. God is even touching the people you left at home or in the hospitals. Right now, I see the angel of the Lord. Wave your hands. I see the angels of the Lord leaving this place. Everyone connected to you by blood is implicated by the power that is in this service. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, sir. Uh, this is Mrs. Uh, Herma David. Yes. She came into the service with West Pen. That West is pain. West Pen again. <laughs> and this pen lasted for more than 10 years. 10 years of West Pen. And she could do what she could not do. She's doing look at it that. Now. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Give God a big shout of praise. 10 years. You deserve the glory and the honor. If God is healing them, God is touching you where you where you need a you need a miracle. If God is healing them, God is touching you at the point of your expectation. You deserve the glory and the honor. We lift our voice in worship as we bless your whole sing it. You, you the miracle so great. There is no one else like you. No one else like you, Lord. There is no one else like you. For you. Come, 
man, let, let's perfect it. Hold my hand. Affliction will not rise the second time. Father, by the power of the anointing, it is gone and gone forever. You are healed completely and strengthened by the hand of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, sir. There's another instant miracle. Yes, sir. This is Mrs. Grace yes. Still West Pen. West Pen again. Yes, sir. She's healed of West Pen that lasts for over two weeks. Two weeks. Unconditional. Unconditionally. And, and bone condition. And bone condition. Where? Yes, sir. Where? Your uh -huh. hand. Yes, what sir. was wrong with your hand? Just like that, I don't know, but I feel pains in my bone. Around there. Yes. When God heals bone condition, it means God is bringing your life into structure. Your Amen. bones are your structure. Amen. God is bringing your life into order. That's what. That's the meaning of that healing there. Amen. It's perfected in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. There's, There's instant like miracle again. Miracles. Amen. This Please brother Michael Jimrewa. Please sit down. God bless you. Just sit for a minute or two. We'll close soon. Amen. There's an instant miracle alert here. And here is the evidence. Here is the evidence. Let me, let me see. What a marvelous God. What a marvelous God. He has done marvelous things for me. What a marvelous He's still doing marvelous things for me. I saw the alert, so I won't tell you how much. But I prophesy, everyone that is in need of a financial miracle, beginning from tonight, it is released to your doorstep. In the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. Sir, this is Bromika James, healed from fever. Started last night to this morning, but fever. now she's... He is healed completely. Fever. Completely. Fever all through. Yes, sir. And you are fine now. It is well. Come. Let, let's perfect it. Fever. So you were feeling it in the service. Stand up, sir. Stand up. Stand up. You felt it while you came for service? Even sitting down, I can't do anything. But when we started the praise and worship, the last part of the praise and worship, that's when I was healed. Never underestimate the power of praise. During the praise, he was healed. Hold my hand, sir. Father, make him whole. Help him in the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. Next, quickly. This is Mrs. Justina Obida. Yes. Healed of side hip pain. Hip that, pain. That is over three years. Of side and hip. Hips. Hips. Yes, sir. Your hips. Here. Ribs. Okay, ribs. ribs. Yes, sir. You heard I said there was somebody with pain around the ribs. Yes, sir. Can we give God a big clap of praise? Come, my dear. How long had it lasted? More than three years. Yes, sir. This side, the left side, hold my hand. Something happened and now that's the power of God. <laughs> and may is perfected in the name of Jesus. She's under the power of God, very strong. Yes, sir. Go ahead. This is Sister Rifkatu Ayuba, side rib, healed. Side again. Yes, sir. Ribs, healed. Yes, sir. And a heart, and a heart problem. Heart problem. Yes, sir. That this lasts for over two days. The heart issue or yes. the ribs? But boots yes sir. for two days yes sir you've been feeling pains yes sir. and you are now you are well yes sir. give god the glory it's perfected in the name of jesus it's perfected in the name of jesus it's perfected in the name of jesus yes sir quickly this is abigail emmanuel healed of my green headache that lasts over two years every form of headache leaves this hall right now There's somebody with your own headache is at the back, behind your head. And from what I see, you are a woman. There may be more, but I'm seeing a woman. You are tying a head tie right now. You have these headaches at the back of your head, at the base where your mandula is. God is healing you. You are tying a head tie. You are tying a head tie. Confirm it and give us a testimony right now. It's perfected in the name of Jesus.
And West Pain, that is, she's healed of West Pain. And West Pain, yes, sir, is perfected in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes. Next. This brother Mary Donatus oh, healed yes. of severe shoulder pain. Shoulder pain. Yes, sir. How long? This morning, sir. I started this morning. This morning. Yes, sir. Could you lift your hand? Okay, when you lift your hand. Yes. Now try it. Let's see. Then it's gone, sir. Give God a big clap of praise. It's perfected in Jesus' name. Yes. This is Mommy Hajara, healed of ribs pain. She could not remember the years. Many years. Ribs. Now healed. Yes, sir. Okay, this side towards yes. your back. Yes, sir. Even when you are talking, it was so painful. I was just managing. When you say ribs, I say toe. And Even when the word on, came, it was still there. I was doing like this and I was not feeling it. All of a sudden, it disappeared. Your problems will disappear without you knowing. It's perfected in Jesus' name. Online, if you are following us online, please send your testimony quickly. There should be a way by which they can send either the PR line or something. Uh, get the testimony quick. Yes. Because I feel that God is doing miracles online. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Sir, this is Brother Samuel. Praise healed of fever since Friday and healed of pain in bones and hand for more than six months. For more than six months. Pain in your hands. Yes. Come, sir. Your hands. Pains all over. For six months. And God touched you. Yes, sir. I imagine that you could do things with difficulty. Yes, sir. You uh, surely have severe pains. Severe pain. So anything you want to do with your hands, you yes, so much pain. Now, God is not only healing you tonight. God is going to make you a vessel of healing. You believe that? Hold my hand. Father is perfected. And let the healing anointing be released into his life. You'll be a vessel that will carry the presence and the healing power of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. It's in you. God bless you. Papa, sir, we have an online testimony. Online testimony, yes, sir. I had a back pain from my waist. It happened some time ago. Today, it was severe. But after the dancing to the praise, I can bend and strength and strengthen with it without pain. So the person was dancing online. Yeah, he was dancing. He was following us on the dance, the praise section. Yeah. So during the praise section, she found out that he had strength. The pain was gone. From where? This person is from where? From Abuja. From Abuja. Yes, Can sir. you give God praise? Father, we thank you tonight. Can we be upstanding? The Lord said I should say to somebody tonight, this month will be your month of breakthroughs. I said, the Lord said, this month will be a month of breakthroughs. Glory be to your name. Wave your hands and give him praise. There are so many things God is already doing, I'm telling you. Mighty miracles happening. Mighty miracles in the air. Thank you, Jesus. He's alive, amen. He's alive. Jesus is alive. For Two more times. He's alive. Oh, he's alive. Jesus is alive. Forever he's alive. One more time. Lift your voice and let's declare. Oh, he's alive. Oh, he's alive. Yeah. 
God is breaking the yoke of delay right now. If you are a lady and you are not married and you want to get married this year, lift your hands. It's nothing to be ashamed about. I talked to you, I spoke to you about the prophetic. God has instructed me to release an opening of that door for you. The way you are lifting your hands, you don't want to, you are ashamed of a miracle. I said if you are a lady and you want to get married this year, not next year, lift your hands. Father, let the door of mar marital settlement be open. Let every embargo that the enemy has placed on their lives be broken now. Amen. Every strong man that has resisted you, I oppose and resist him now. Amen. Let that door be open now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. As I stood there, I heard the word contract. In this place, there's somebody here. A contract is coming to you here. Amen. Here, yeah, this place. I heard the word contracts. We are out of time. I would have ministered individually, but we are out of time. That's why I'm just prophesying generally. I would have just called people one by one, but we are out of time. Jesus said, what I said to one, I say to all. It is released in the name of Jesus. My dear, lift your hands. Yes, you with the pink scarf. Lift your two hands. I see the angel of the Lord visiting you visiting your family in this season and you will not believe what I'm about to tell you but in seven days time there is a miracle coming a miracle that will cause the ears of men to tingle I point to you by the power of the Holy Ghost and I release it now I release that miracle in the name of Jesus there's someone around here with a pain around your leg is closer to your ankle around this place there's somebody with a pain I see God healing you right now as you stand lift your hands father I pray for your children tonight I release a blessing on them I decree and declare that this is the month of answered prayers for them I said this is the month of answered prayers let every long-standing request that has been before the throne of grace be released with an answer into your life I declare that whatever you lost in the first quarter of this year, God is releasing it to you this month. Amen. I declare full restoration of everything that is lost. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I declare a season of breakthroughs for your children. Amen. Let every door that was closed be open. Amen. In their career, open doors. Amen. In their finances, open doors. Amen. In their spiritual lives, open doors. Amen. I declare, receive the help of God and the help of man. In the name of Jesus. He says, surely there is an end to everything. And thy expectation shall not be cut short. Help that lady. I declare, every expectation you came here with is turned to an answer now. It's turned to a testimony now. In the name of Jesus. And I pray for everyone whose prayer life is dead. Everyone whose spiritual life is down. I declare, let the fire that exists on the throne of God fall upon your life right now. Yeah. And let everything that was dead be revived now. Yeah. Let everything that was dead be revived now. Yeah. Be revived now. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Blessed be your name, Father. In Jesus' precious name.